Okay, so we've had a little look around the DSO Nano and we've upgraded the firmware and switched it on and this is the screen that we come up with. So to have a little tour around we need a signal to have a look at and luckily it comes with a signal. So if we take our probe here, the other end of which has got uh, this BNC connector on it and on the side of the DSO Nano there is a socket and we plug that in and then we look at the probe and if we pull back this sleeve we see a little hook and on the side of the DSO Nano here there's a pin there we can just hook that over and let go and it provides us with a nice square wave signal and there we are so let's just zoom in on the screen Okay, hopefully we can now see the screen and uh, it's reasonably in focus, as focused as I can get it. So, <clears throat> what we see on the screen here is a nice square wave trace. We can see some grids on the screen. We can see some information at the top, some information at the bottom, and down the side here uh, are some menu items. Okay. <clears throat> So an oscilloscope is basically a voltage measuring device uh, and the height of these waves tell you the height of the voltage but it's a voltage measuring device over time as opposed to an ordinary voltmeter so this scale is volts and this scale is time and <clears throat> if we use our up and down arrow keys here these ones on the side going down goes down the menu items in the right hand uh, margin. The top one is VD, stands for volts per division. Next one is TD, time, versus, time per division. Um, YA things on the Y axis, XA things on the X axis. TR is about triggering, ME is about what we're measuring, FI is about writing things to file. Um, FR is adjusting the frequency that's being output and I haven't yet worked out what OT is. So let's go back up to volts per division and if we hit the M key it shows us that the only option here is volts per division and if we use the two, these two keys either side we can show what happens if we get half a volt per division, one volt per division or two volts per division and that's showing up here here it's saying two, so if you watch here as we go up, it says one volt per division, half a volt per division, two volts per division, and so on as we go down. So that's just changing the vertical scale. So if we come, uh, press M to get rid of that, come down one, we're now in time per division. Again, if we press M, there is only one option here. And what we see here is we're getting more time or less time per division and that's showing up uh, in here in yellow in the middle 200 microseconds 100 microseconds 50 microseconds 200 500 1 millisecond 2 milliseconds 5 milliseconds so that's just changing the horizontal scale if we come down to YA and press menu we then see we've got a number of options here v1 cursor v2 cursor ground position vertical position and reference position well the things that are most relevant here are the v1 and v2 and there's a horizontal line here at the top that you can see and another one here at the bottom this top one is v1 and if we use the left and right keys we can see that we can move this down and as we do if you look in the bottom corner here you can see what level the V1 cursor is currently at 4.8 volts 7 and if we come down onto the top of that line it says 3.68 volts let me come up a bit yeah 3.68 volts if we use the minus key to get to the V2 cursor that's currently saying minus 800 millivolts let's come up until we're on the bottom of that line and now it says V2 is minus 40 millivolts and in here we've got delta V 3.72 the difference between the two so we can now see what voltage is um, measured by the height of this square wave
Uh, if we come down again we can see ground position and we can move the ground position up with reference to um, uh, vertical position reference points. Um, vertical position we can just shift the whole waveform up and down and I haven't quite understood what reference position is about. Okay, uh, okay. So, uh, next menu item is on the X axis, and these are the time cursors in the same way as the previous two ver cursors allowed us to measure voltage. These two allow us to measure time, and you can see on the left there's a vertical line that's moving over. I can put it on the edge of that signal on the falling edge of the square wave there and down here it's saying minus 504 microseconds T1 and if I come down to T2 cursor I can move this one over and measure say the positive carrying edge of that signal uh, and now we've got T2 8 microseconds and again uh, delta T 512 microseconds so <clears throat> given that this is a 1 kilohertz supposed to be a 1 kilohertz signal I guess I'm not measuring them absolutely precisely I can only get it to 496 498 oh 512 504 is as close as I can get it okay <clears throat> and then there's the trigger position the last position here and the trigger position is to do with where it starts showing us um, the, the waveform. It's this dotted line here, and I'll come on to triggers a little bit more in a moment. In fact, now, because this is all about triggers. We have trigger mode, uh, and this is shown up in this top right-hand corner. Trigger mode normal, uh, sing uh, or auto and next to auto there's a little up or down um, and we'll explain that in a moment uh, I'm <clears throat> only just the very beginning of understanding triggers um, but if you basically think that a, the setting of the trigger explains to the oscilloscope where you want to start taking a picture because we've got a, a lot of signal going on here we're just looking at a little tiny piece on our screen uh, trigger level is this green line here and basically it shows what level of voltage co constitutes the the trigger and if we look down in this bottom corner here we can see 1.6 volt 1 point whatever uh, next one down is trigger sensitivity and if we do this we can see that <clears throat> we could have quite a wide range of possibility for, for trigger and the last one is trigger kind and if we look up in the top here next to auto we see that the little yellow arrow is pointing down and we're triggering on the negative going slope of the signal or do it the other way and it's going up and now we're triggering on the positive going slope of the signal. The trigger is staying in the same position but you'll notice that the signal is changing its position in the window because that's what trigger is all about. It's what we're looking at within the window. Next one down is what we're measuring and <clears throat> this is what is showing up here. So at the moment we're measuring frequency which is 1k but as we come down we're measuring here the duty cycle percentage which is the percentage that it's up as compared with down uh, RMS voltage I don't know what percent is about uh, I don't know what oh that must be pulse pulse width uh, 496 microseconds voltage peak to peak voltage min voltage max and voltage average and whatever you leave this set on so if we leave this set on pulse width then what you'll see up here is pulse width it's what we're measuring Next one down is file and we can save the image, we can save um, all sorts of various things if we've got uh, a micro SD card in here. Next one down is frequency. This is for adjusting the frequency of the signal that we're getting out of our signal generator. Um, if we look down here we can see we can go up 2 kilohertz, 3, 4, 
to 1, 900, 800, etc. If we press and hold the M key, it goes to the next level of decimals, so now we're going up um, decimal 10, and if we hold it again, it goes to the next level of decimals. Um, that's that. Um, and this last one, um, I don't understand at all, but it's to do with sampling speed, display modes, etc, etc. But once you've got these basic things that I'm showing you here, and you've had a little play around, then you'll find that Ben's manual will make a lot more sense to you. Go and read that. By the time you've watched this video, read Ben's manual, you should be able to make sense of all the how to use an oscilloscope lessons that there are on YouTube and on the internet. So that's it for now. Um, next time we come back I'll be measuring some real signals in real circuits and doing a bit of debugging I hope.